Hi, in this lesson, we're going to be talking about composition of functions. Now, once we get into this, you may be wondering, why are we doing this and what is the point? Oftentimes we ask ourselves that in mathematics. Well, for this one, one application of composition of functions is for um, finding the discount, the discount amount of an item or the sale amount from a discount item. Or um, even further than that, in calculus, when you're studying the chain rule, you'll be using composition of functions. You might see the notation for composition of functions written differently, depending. You might see this symbol with the open circle, that means composition, or you might see it like this, where it's kind of reminiscent of um, evaluating functions. But in either case, we say f of g of x. So whenever you see this symbol or written like this, you say f of g of x. <clears throat> this means you are inputting g of x into f of x. So just like evaluating functions, you're plugging in, you're substituting in something to the function. And in this case, that something is another function. So we're plugging a function into a function type of situation. If you recall from evaluating functions, f of two, when we're given f of x equals x plus four, two could be considered our function. It's not really, in this case, it's a constant, it's an x value but we could pretend like this is a function called g of x and g of x is two. So you do the same process. You're just taking two and you're subbing it in for x. x becomes two. So instead, if this were another function, you would plug that other function into x the same way. So it's really no different than evaluating functions. We have an example here, f of x equals x squared and g of x equals x plus four. We're finding f of g of x. So we're going to take g of x and we're going to plug it into x. g of x goes into f of x. So what we're finding is <clears throat> f of g of x means f of x plus four, because g of x is x plus four, which means in place of x, I'm going to be putting, substituting x plus four. Now f of x was x squared. So that's why I have x plus four squared, because now x is x plus four. Then we could simplify this. We're going to expand this out using our rules of exponents and then multiply. And you should get x times x, 4 times x, 4 times x, and 4 times 4. So f of g of x is x squared plus 8x plus 16. We can also go the other way, find g of, find g of f of x with the same exact functions. We know that g of x is x plus four, and we know f of x is x squared. So if we're finding g of f of x, then that means we're plugging f of x into g. Mm, I'll change this color. So f of x gets plugged into g of x. And there's no simplifying we can do here, so this would be complete. Not so hard, right? Next example, if f of x is five over x, 
and g of x is x plus two, find f of g of x and state the domain. Now, there's a reason why it says state the domain and you'll see in just a second, uh, or actually you can see it now, the first function is a rational function and rational functions have excluded values. So we're going to have to state those excluded values as part of our answer. If we want f of g of x, then that means I'm going to be taking g of x and plugging it into f of x. So that is five over g of x, which is x plus two. Then there's not really any simplifying we can do here, but we can state our excluded value. X cannot equal, so which value of X would make the function undefined? It's where the denominator equals zero. So you would minus two to solve for X and that would be the X value that makes the denominator zero. And that's it, it's all at once. Then it says using the same function, find F of G of three. There's several ways you can do this. We already found F of G of X. So we could just take f of g of x and plug in three, or you could plug in, you could find g of three and then plug it into f of x. So you kind of, you work your way out. You start with the innermost parentheses and then work your way out, or you can use the answer that we found in the first part of the question to plug in three. <clears throat> I'll show you both. g of 3 is 3 plus 2, x plus 2, and we get 5. And then f of g of 3 means f of 5. f is 5 over x. x in this case is 5. And so we get an actual value here, which is nice. Or you can use what we already found here, f of g of x is five over x plus two. And then they want us to find f of g of three. So that means we're plugging in three for x, then simplify, and we still get one. And that's it. So in either case, it doesn't matter which way you do it, you're gonna get one, they're both great, either one's fine. Next page, I really like these. These are kind of fun, they're like little puzzles. We have a table and we're wanting to find certain composition of functions. And you just kind of use the table to navigate your way through these. But still, we're gonna start with like that um, G of whatever, that farthest function. So more specifically, G of negative nine is where we start. And then whatever we get for that, we do F of whatever that was. So let me just show you. G of negative nine. So in this case, X is negative nine. The G of negative nine is six. So G of negative nine is six. Now what we have is F of six, where X is six. So f of six is five. Final answer, five. Isn't that kind of fun? I like those. So I, if you can, pause the video, try the others, and come back and check. Hopefully, if you paused it, <clears throat> 
you would have found f of six is five. And then f of five, oh, that's weird, is six. That one ended up kind of funny. So you start with the farthest right, f of six, whatever you get for that value is now the outer function, f of whatever that was. Then f of five is six. G of six is negative eight. I love these. Last one, G of 15, so X is 15, G of 15 is coincidentally 15. So this is 15. And then G of 15 again is still 15. And that's it, it's all at once. So that's composition of functions using a table of values. Then we can do a graph, which is essentially a table of values in picture form. And this one wants, use the graphs below to evaluate f of g of one. Now take note of the graphs. In the first graph, we have g of x. And in the second graph, we have f of x. So we have two different functions being graphed. We're wanting to find g, no, sorry, f of of g of one. So we're starting with g of one, which means that we need to look at, at the graph of g. g of one, where one is x, let's use blue, one is x, g of one is three. So that point is one comma three. So G of one is three. Then we need to find F of G of one, which is three. So you go to the F graph, locate three as X and find the Y value that is related to it, which is six, final answer. Isn't that kind of fun? I like those. I think they're fun. Ooh, we have a really fun one down here. Find the domain of f of g of x if f of x is 1 over x minus 2 and g of x is x plus or square root of x plus 4. So we have two different functions and both of those functions have domains. But what we're trying to find is the domain of f of g of x which means that we're taking g of x and we're plugging it into f. So f of g of x means f of square root x plus four. So I'm taking f and where I see an x is x plus four. So that's f of g of x, but what it's asking for is the domain. So we're gonna have to figure that out. To do that, we know that we have a rational function. A rational function basically means that the function is a fraction where there's a variable in the denominator. And what we know is that the denominator cannot equal zero. So we need to figure out where the denominator is zero. To do that, we're gonna take the denominator, whoops, that's silly. Set it equal to zero to figure out where it's zero. Then we're going to solve. We're gonna add two. We're gonna undo the square root or do the inverse operation to make the inside come out. So we square both sides. X plus four equals four and then subtract four and we get zero. So when x is zero, our denominator is zero, which makes the function undefined. 
So for the domain, we would say x cannot equal zero because that's where the function is undefined. If you were to write this in interval notation, we would go negative infinity to zero parentheses union zero to infinity, which means that there's a break in the graph at x equals zero. You can always look at the graph to confirm that. That's all I have for composition of functions. I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions, please let me know. I'd be happy to help.